Greetings to all my dear students. The chapter that we are going to study today is Journey to the End of Earth by Tishani Doshi. This story is a part of Vista's textbook and this is part 1 of the video. So, let's go ahead and read the chapter. This prose has been written by Tishani Doshi. You can see her picture. She is an Indian poet, actress, writer and dancer based in Chennai. Now here students you can see that there is a team of students. Primarily students are there in that team. So they are a part of an award winning organization which offers unique educational expedition to Antarctic and Arctic regions. Now this organization is known as Students on Ice. You can log in to their website www.studentsonice and you can see their various past expedition. And here this is the ship or research vessel in which they went to Antarctica. It's a mystery continent at the bottom of the world and the largest single mass of ice on earth. For longer than humans have walked the planet, ice has dominated Antarctica. But what about its future? As the earth gets warmer, what will happen to Antarctica? Today, in this journey to the end of earth, we will seek answers to all these questions. Now, before we begin, let me make you aware of some of the interesting facts about the place that you are going to visit through this chapter. So, uh, some interesting facts regarding Antarctica. It is the coldest continent on Earth with the lowest recorded temperature reaching minus 89.2 degrees Celsius. Not only is Antarctica the coldest continent, it is also the driest highest and windiest with winds reaching over 200 MP. Some people planning to work in Antarctica are required to have their wisdom teeth and appendix removed. This is to lessen risk as medical aid is not available there. Quite strange. In 2013, the rock band Metallica played a gig inside a small dome on Antarctica for a crowd of 120 people. Now Metallica, so it becomes the only band to have played on all seven continents. Next, Antarctica sits on every line of longitude. Therefore, technically it falls under every time zone. Some parts of Antarctica have not experienced rain or snow in 2 million years. In 1978, Emilio Palma became the first document child to have been born in Antarctica. Antarctica is enormous. It is the fifth largest continent ahead of Europe and is almost twice the size of Australia. There is a fire department on Antarctica. Due to the dryness, fire is a real danger and very hard to put out. In 1959, a treaty was signed by 12 countries calling for Antarctica to be used for peaceful purposes only. Consequently, no country owns Antarctica. Now, students want additional information. Antarctica is the only continent with no confirmed cases of coronavirus disease 2019 amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, before you read, there is a line given in your textbook that if you want to know more about the planet's past, present and future, then Antarctica is the place to go to. So, bon voyage and let's go, let's start our journey to Antarctica. Now, before we start reading some technical details, the prose has been written as a travelogue and also as an environmental article in first person by the author, by the writer Tishani Doshi, which means 
she is the mouthpiece of the narration we get to hear the entire story from her point of view in first person okay so let's begin with the text part early this year i found myself abroad on a russian research vessel a vessel is a ship a large ship the academic shokolsky now this is the name of the research vessel the ship academic shokolsky heading towards the coldest driest windiest continent in the world and as i've told you already it is none other than antarctica my journey began 13.09 degrees north of the equator in madras and involved crossing nine time zones six checkpoints three bodies of water and at least as many ecospheres so this is how the journey initiated the author has started for antarctica but reaching there is not an easy task so she has to travel a lot and through different environmental and climatic conditions to reach antarctica by the time i actually set foot on the antarctic continent i had been traveling over 100 hours in combination of a car and aeroplane and a ship so she has to travel for a very long time that is 100 hours it is too much and she has to change she, she has to use different modes of transportation that is roadways uh, airways waterways so the first emotion that she has is that she feels relaxed that okay finally i reached my destination after so much of travel after that what she saw that expansive white landscape and uninterrupted blue horizon she felt relief which was followed with an immediate and profound wonder so the second emotion that she feels after relief is wonder she sees the vast blue horizon the great expanse of antarctica in comparison and in contradiction to the city life which she is used to in the city life there are vehicles moving around there will be buildings there will be shops there will be people all around but here there is nothing but expansive huge white large landscape and a blue horizon at the end so this contrast it makes her wonder it makes it feels her it makes her feel amazed and it fills her with immediate and profound wonder that such place also exists on our planet earth wonder at its immensity its a vastness its isolation isolation means naturally since uh, such harsh conditions are there in antarctica so nobody visits there unless it is for some academic or research purpose but mainly at how there could ever have been a time when india and antarctica were part of the same landmass so once india and antarctica before the continental split all of them were a part of the same landmass known as gondwana land so we'll talk about that in details later on now here in your textbook a subtitle has been given part of history so in this part we'll learn about the history of antarctica and about its origin 650 million years ago a giant amalgamated southern supercontinent supercontinent means a huge continent it then comprised of all the continents that we have today gondwana did indeed exist centered roughly around the present day antarctica and the center of that supercontinent was antarctica things were quite different then humans had not arrived on the global scene so humans were not there on the global scene and climate was much warmer hosting a huge variety of flora and fauna so just imagine that time humans are not there temperature is much warmer all around forests are there and then there is a supercontinent 
and antarctica lies at the center not like today when antarctica is at the bottom of the world so things went on like this till 500 million years for 500 million years gondwana thrived but around the time when the dinosaurs were wiped out and the age of mammals got underway the land mass was forced to separate into countries here we are talking about the continental split the split of one massive land mass that is gondwana land the supercontinent it broke apart into seven different continents shaping the globe much as we know it today so today when you see the globe the position of continents that lies there it was not like that millions of years ago it is the result of continental split now this is some um, additional information a scientist named alfred wiener he was a German scientist. He introduced the theory of continental drift in his book, The Origin of the Continents and Oceans, which was published in the year 1915. Now, many scientists had uh, noticed the remarkable fit of the coastlines of South America and Africa. But he was the one who used geological and uh, other evidences related to fossils that is known as paleontological evidence to show these continents were once joined so all the continents as we see them today it was not like that earlier they were joined and then they broke apart because of the continental split so here in this picture you can see how the continental drift took place so earlier there was a huge uh, land uh, mass known as Pangaea and later on it gradually drifted and divided into the seven continents as we see them today. So just see the journey from this Permian period to the present day time. Now you might ask that uh, all this continental drift theory it might just be a story. Uh, Gondwana land might never had, have existed at all. But Wiener, he gave evidence for continental drift that continents fit together like a puzzle. Example, the Atlantic coastlines of Africa and South America. Along with that, he gave other examples, other evidences also like fossil fuels, uh, some kind of uh, plants and animals that were found along the coastline. So he proved his point and indeed it was established that this continental drift took place for real. Now to visit Antarctica now is to be a part of that history. What happened millions of years ago. To get a grasp of where we have come from and where we could possibly be heading. Now why we can go to our past when we come to Antarctica because unlike the places where we are living nothing has changed in antarctica the situations that were there at the time of uh, the split of continents they remain constant because there is no human intervention there that is why it is a very good place to go to if we want to relate with our past it is to understand the significance of Cordilleran folds. Now, Cordilleran folds are formed by a system or group of parallel mountain ranges together with intervening plateaus and other features and pre Cambrian granite shields. Now, these are the granite shields which were formed before the Cambrian uh, period, that is about 540 million years ago, roughly. Ozone and carbon evolution and extinction when you think about all that can happen in a million years so many species evolved including human beings so many species extincted or best example exemplar is dinosaurs so it can get pretty mind boggling now we can see the universe the earth from a broader perspective mind boggling means something that disturbs your mind 